The address-based layout randomization, or ASLR, mitigation is the act of randomizing where things are found in memory, such as the stack, the heap, or executable code. So for instance, if you imagine that you've got, you know, virtual memory is set up like this, and there's some code in it, and some stack in the heap, well, the idea is that there's some sort of re-randomization interval at which time things are shifted around in memory. So if an attacker made an exploit that like hard-coded an assumption that you know, some code existed here or some data existed there, then their assumptions will be invalid across randomizations. And so this would just keep taking place and continuously make it more and more difficult for an attacker. The equivalent thing exists in kernel space for the actual randomization of the operating system kernel itself. So ASLR can apply to things like user space, kernel space, firmware, virtualization, and so the idea is that, you know, the first thing that is responsible for construction of memory and whether the memory layout, whether that's the layout of an individual process, the layout of the OS kernel, the layout of the virtualization system or the firmware, whatever is setting up that initial memory layout is responsible for having some option to randomize layout. So it's not just fixed always at hard coded addresses. And so again, this makes it much harder for an attacker because they would like to have it be the case that they can always know that, you know, some juicy bit of data like a function pointer can be found at some particular address. And if they just overwrite that function pointer at that address, then boom, whenever it's called, it jumps to attacker controlled code. But ASLR makes that harder. When it comes to availability, it's ultimately up to the execution environment to support it meaning the operating system VMM or firmware has to explicitly have this mechanism for randomization. So if you are a operating system virtualization or firmware programmer, that means it's your job to actually enable this mechanism. And so while most operating systems have it at this point, it's a little bit less common or let's say less robust on virtualization systems, and it's almost non-existent on most firmware systems. So ultimately, you know, again, this is a important exploit mitigation and that's why things like firmware tend to be uh, more vulnerable because they're lacking this mitigation. Additionally, if you're, you know, just a user space programmer, it may require you opting in at compile time to say, yes, my program is compatible with address-based layout randomization. No, I don't make any hard-coded assumptions about where things are in memory. Um, the reason this is typically required is because of backwards compatibility and stuff like that. Operating systems don't just necessarily force this on for everyone, although sometimes they have that option. So to make it nicer, uh, typically a application must say, yes, I support address-based layout randomization. Dear operating system, you can move my code around and it's not going to break me one bit. Now, when it comes to the effectiveness of address-based layout randomization as an exploit mitigation, it sort of depends. So on 32-bit systems, there's probably less address space that's free. So again, it just all comes down to 32-bit means you've got four gigabytes. And so is the system using most of those four gigabytes? If the system is like Windows or Linux or some large operating system, it's probably using a lot of that space. So the available uh, memory randomization is less. Specifically on Windows 32-bit system, it only has 8 bits of entropy, 8 bits of randomization that can occur for the addresses for EXEs in memory, and 14 bits for DLLs, or shared libraries in memory. And so that means, you know, if there's only 8 bits of memory, that means an attacker, you know, theoretically has a 1 in 256 chance to, you know, successfully guess a hard-coded address where they'd like to find something. So if they're trying to attack something like a daemon that will just automatically restart after it's crashed, then they could just keep trying, keep trying, keep trying, and eventually they will succeed. When it comes to embedded systems and firmware type devices, they have the advantage that they're not necessarily having a giant amount of code like a full-fledged operating system on a desktop or server, but they have the disadvantage that they will typically have uh, memory mapped I.O. ranges that are typically hard-coded and fixed and required uh, by the actual hardware maker. So the randomization there can be quite a bit less effective. And that's again why I said that, you know, firmware very uncommon for address-based layout randomization to exist, but there's no reason that it can't. Then when it comes to full 64-bit systems, well, there's a whole lot more address space that's not being used and consequently uh, you can have more effective randomization. Other design decisions that can affect the effectiveness of ASLR are things like what is the re-randomization interval? So for instance, you know, if the system is only re-randomized at every reboot and people are keeping their machines without rebooting for weeks or months at a time, 
well, then, you know, perhaps there's not as much effectiveness to that. Uh, on the other hand, it's extremely difficult to just sort of like jumble everything up all, you know, at a moment's notice without a whole bunch of stuff breaking on the system. So typically you can have things like perhaps at every process launch, the process could end up at a different memory address because it had been torn down and rebuilt. But, you know, again, something like a firmware that's just continuously running a big monolithic blob forever, that's hard to re-randomize. The same for operating systems and virtualization systems. When it comes to, again, user space type things, you might have uh, design decisions that were made by an operating system to, for instance, map shared libraries, things like DLLs, shared libraries on Linux. Uh, you might have design decisions to map them at the same virtual address space across all the different processes for uh, optimization purposes and copy on write and memory sharing and stuff like that. And that can mean that, for instance, if a memory address is disclosed in one process, it could potentially be reused in another process if they're trying to, for instance, find you know some code that they want to reuse in a given library. Now, when it comes to not just looking at weaknesses of the implementation, but instead just architecturally trying to bypass an exploit mitigation like ASLR, an attacker can do this by utilizing a different class of vulnerability that we haven't learned about yet called information disclosure or info leaks. And the basic idea there is that ASLR's strength is based on the idea of an attacker can't know where something that's been randomized is. It's assumed that you know if you're in a 64-bit address space, there's just too many choices. They can't, uh, they don't, they're not going to have a high enough probability to successfully guess. So what are they going to do? They're going to not guess. They're going to try to find something that allows them to read memory, and then based on the reading of information, they can potentially figure out you know, how much the memory was slid by and figure out what that displacement is, and consequently understand, okay, well, if everything's been moved this much, then the thing that I'm actually looking for is this much plus X. So info leaks are the type of thing that just allow an attacker to architecturally bypass it. Now, it still is beneficial to have the mitigation in place because you're effectively making the attacker find an extra bug instead of, you know, one bug to win. Now they've got to find two bugs. And indeed, these are a fundamental staple of uh, exploit chains that try to bypass, uh, that try to successfully exploit the system on systems that support ASLR. As mentioned previously, compilation time opt-in is often required, so check the website and we will provide the compiler options that are necessary for you to say, my program supports address-based layout randomization.